Hey everybody and welcome back to the Final Cut X training videos. Once again, I'm Dr. Casey Hart and we're actually transitioning now into the next level uh, section of our training videos. In this module, uh, we're going to be talking about some effects in particular that you can use in Final Cut X to actually uh, take your project to the next level. In this video in particular, I want to talk about color correction with you. Now, <clears throat> understand this. In general, um, what you put in is what you get out. I like to use the example of uh, cooking and say, basically, the better your ingredients are, the easier it is to cook with. Uh, even if you're not the greatest chef in the world, if you have really fresh, really great ingredients, you can still make a pretty good meal. If you have really poor ingredients, then you have to be very, very talented to uh, really make something that's, that's really good with those terrible ingredients. Color correction is kind of like, uh, kind of like that. If you go out and you shoot footage and you've got some pretty, uh, pretty big problems, like what you see on the screen with uh, your camera not being properly white balanced, too hot, uh, too cold, uh, or too high energy, too low energy. Um, for example, here's a shot of a tennis match. You can tell it's improperly white balanced. Everyone here is blue. If you've got a situation like this, uh, you can clean it up, but it will never look as good as if you were to have actually shot it correctly the first time uh, and properly white balanced your camera out in the field. So this is all just basically making up for uh, kind of making a mistake in the field. So don't think that you can just wait until you're in the studio or in the edit bay and then just make up for lost time there. It's always better to shoot it the right or shoot it correctly the first uh, first time. That being said, let's go ahead and show how this works. Now, the first thing you have to understand is what we're actually going from is this to this or from this to something a little bit more like that. So you can see we can make up a lot. We can uh, do a lot of work to make this shot look a little bit more natural. Let's start with something dramatic, like this <clears throat> very orange shot here. What we're going to do first is come over into our effects window, go to color, and find color correction. And we'll bring it in and drop it off on the clip that we, in fact, uh, we intend to correct. Now, once you've dropped the effect off, you'll notice that it will actually appear under effects, under video, in the inspector. The inspector, as we've talked about in previous videos, can be turned off and on there. So under video, effects, color correction. Now, before we get started on working with this, it's always better to have certain tools open so you can see what you're doing. Now, what we're going to be working with are called video scopes. So we'll click View, Show Video Scopes. And I'm going to make a little bit of extra room here, or try to at least. Let me actually just close my browsers so we can actually see what's going on here. And I'm going to take it one by one, so I'm just going to choose a single pane as opposed to the double pane. Now, the way we walk through this <clears throat> is we start with light, then we go with color, then we go with saturation. The first thing we need up is waveform and luma. This is light. Once we have the video scope up, we click on color board and exposure. So we're going to go exposure, color, and then saturation. Now what you see here is actually a representation of what we have on the screen. You'll see that 100 is actually uh, pure white on the screen. If 100 is pure white, 0 represents pure black. 
right here, the brightest part of the screen, the closest to pure white we have, and in fact it's actually blowing out, it's above pure white, is actually this doorway on the screen right there. We have blue and kind of a light area of the monitor right there. We've got, in this case, Kaylee uh, in this area right there. So it's a visual representation of what we see on screen. Now the trick here is with exposure, we want to set our white at 100 and our black at 0, and then adjust the midpoint this, with this gray somewhere in the middle to give us the best details possible. So we'll grab our highlight and we'll just adjust the top to max out at 100. Now if we didn't have any solid white in our project, if we had no solid white whatsoever, then we wouldn't actually have a 100 here. Just want to make that clear. Similarly, if we had no solid black, <clears throat> we would have no zero. But we certainly do have solid black here. So we're going to try and base everything out at zero. If we can. This would be too dark. That's too light. And you see it starts getting uh, washed out. So we try and set it as close to zero as possible. Then we adjust the midtones to give us enough detail to where we see our, our subject and to where our, our picture really just kind of pops. That looks about uh, right to me. Next, we switch to color. Once we switch to color, we go to our video scope and choose RGB Parade. This breaks out the red, the green, and the blue into their own little categories to where we can see what's going on in this picture. It's fairly easy to see here that this uh, image, this clip, has way too much red, as you can see in the RGB parade. It's orange, uh, it's got a, a really strong orange tint, and that is represented over here. <clears throat> so we can do one of two things here. We can either add more blue, maybe a little bit more green, or we can take away red. Now you'll notice it needs, it has way too much highlights in red, and uh, mid-tones kind of high as well. The trick is trying to, as much as possible, balance these three colors. In a perfect world, they would all be almost identical all the way through. Excuse me. So, what we're going to do is go in and just play around a bit. You may start taking out a little bit of the red and you'll see that we're balancing out our colors. We may take some out of the mid-tones as well. Maybe add a little bit of blue in there. Hmm. We don't want to go too crazy because then it'll start turning green. We don't want to give it too much. Just enough to where the colors pop and start looking a little bit more true. Mm, that's pretty good for now. We can always go back though, <clears throat> if we wanted to, and actually add a second color correction and jump in and do some more work. For example, add some more blue highlights. To even out the color some more. Take away some green and the mid-tones, and keep playing around with it <coughs> with multiple uh, color corrections until we get something that looks more natural. Anytime we would want to reset one of these, we could simply grab one of these circles and then hit delete on your keyboard to send it right back to where it belongs. This button, this little uh, return looking button, actually will reset all of our uh, spheres here. So we'll do something about like that. And then go back to our original color correction. Once we've got this done, then we go into saturation. And here's where we add more color. So if you've ever seen um, footage and you just say, man, I wish the color would just pop a little bit more. 
here's where you would do this. Start with the uh, dark colors. This is where you'll get most of your really rich colors. Add just a bit in. You don't want to go crazy with it. You just want enough to where it makes your colors pop. Same thing with midtones. And then finally, add a little bit of highlights. Once this is all done, we say the original and the color corrected. Original, color corrected. And you can see that we've made a dramatic change in just a couple of seconds uh, by doing this, just a couple of minutes really, in uh, color correcting this. Now we can't really copy this over from one clip to another very effectively unless it's more or less the exact same lighting environment. We would have to tweak them clip by clip. But this is how you would do this. Now, if I were to go back in, I'm going to bring back up my browser, Show Browser, pick White Balance 2. Here's this clip. And you'll see we're dealing with the exact opposite problem. I'm going to drag my color correction over. Now I'm going to hide my browser again. Now I've got tons of blue and not a whole lot of red. Come back in, choose Luma first, lower the lights, adjust the blacks, and tweak the midtones. Color, yep. switch to RGB parade. Let's reduce a little bit of the blue. Add in some red. Maybe a bit of yellow. Do a little bit of that with the low tones as well. And again, I could add another correction just to to round it out. And then finally, saturation. Start with lows, tweak the mediums, and then finally the highs. We've gone from original to the color corrected. Original, color corrected. And it only takes just a couple of seconds to do this. So again, in most cases, after you've edited everything together in say a commercial or even a full show, someone will go through and then color correct, or at the very least color enhance, the entire show. And now you can too. Uh, again, it's always better to do this um, in the field and to shoot your footage correctly uh, the first time, use the right light. But if you do get yourself in trouble, or just to make your shots pop a little bit more, this is the way to do it. Hope you have fun with it, and I'll see you back here next time for the next level in Final Cut Training.